On the eve of division, Jordan Love, in this moment, who cares? So as we look at these quarterbacks, let this be a lesson for Tiki Barber, for Sean Morash, and for all my friends out there who are New York Giant fans. If you have the guts and you have the stones and you pick the right guy, trading up works. Let this weekend be your evidence. Well, I think it's also it's a bigger conversation than just trading up. It's just taking a quarterback in the first round, especially when you have other needs for your team. Because all those great names that you just laid out, there mm-hmm. are so many that you just missed on. Right, You go back to the 2016 draft, because that's probably about the edge, because Jared Goff was the number one overall pick in that draft. Carson Wentz was number two in that draft. But uh, Paxson Lynch was 26. Terrible, right? Same as Jordan Love, right? Mitch Trubisky, they moved up the Bears to get him. Terrible. Josh Rosen, I mean, did he? Is he even still in the league? I think he lasted two years, and maybe he was on the practice squad. Really, in a second year, Sam Darnold. You guys know all too well about about Sam Dar- Darnold. Dwayne Haskins may rest in peace. Obviously, he passed away with the with the Skins. Uh, now, obviously, the Commanders. Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, Kenny Pickett, Bryce Young. Right, taking a quarterback in the first round is such a crapshoot. It's one of those things where. If the, if the situation is perfect and he's the right player, it makes all the sense in the world. But the only way to know that is in retrospect, right? We can't know if the Giants move up into the top two or even trade with Chicago and go all the way to one, that they're going to take the right guy or the guy that's going to pan out. I, I hear what you're saying, and you're right. It's worth it if it works out. But if it doesn't work out... Man, it feels like it sets you back, dude. Well, it really does. Yeah, but, but your answer, here's what your answer was. Can I surmise your answer yes. and all I heard from you? Go ahead. I'm scared, Evan. <laughs> That's what I heard from you. Well, I'm scared. Well, I can afford to be scared if I have a guy that I kind of believe in in Daniel Jones, even if there is a major injury well, qu- well, but, question. But, but wait a second. You kind of believe in Daniel Jones. Here's what I think is so fun. Well, I only about ca- it, The only thing that holds me back, and I swear this, Evan, yeah, yeah. is the injury stuff. I, I it's, not, it's not, oh, I don't think he has it. Oh, he's not smart. Oh, he makes the same dumb mistakes. Over. That's, not what I, that's not what I'm worried about. Yeah, but the about. injury stuff's a big freaking deal. Like, yeah. you act like, well, that's the only thing. Well, that's a huge thing. But isn't it a... I, I don't know if it's – is it a big thing or is it a freak thing? No, right? it's a is big it, thing. Is it, is it Daniel Jones with his neck injury, which they have not been clear about, and it, it frustrates the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. And the more I heard, oh, this is uh, it's not the same thing as a couple of years ago. Okay, but what the hell was it a couple of years ago? Yeah. Right? And, and, and if it wasn't that, then what is it now? So, I, like, that's the only thing that okay. worries me is, is, it the, is the obscure nature with which they address – his neck injury. Every situation isn't an ideal comparison, but let's play this game. We're all going to sit down this weekend. We're going to watch football, and we're going to watch great quarterbacks for the most part. We're going to mm-hmm. watch a lot of great quarterbacks, and yep. as I just laid out to you, seven of the eight guys were taken in the first round. Five of those guys taken in the first round were involved in trade-ups. Now, think about <laughs> when they were drafted, what the quarterback situation was in that moment as compared to where the Giants are right now. So the Buffalo Bills trade up from 12 to 7 to get Josh Allen. They were coming off a year in which they made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They had a quarterback who was putting up pretty good success. In fact, I'd compare him to Daniel Jones. You may have heard of him. His name is Terod Taylor. And yet the Buffalo Bills said, we like Terod Taylor. We want an answer. Let's go get Josh Allen. When the Kansas City Chiefs traded up from 27 to 10, we all know they had a quarterback. His name was Alex Smith. It afforded Mahomes to sit for a year. The Chiefs were good. Then Mahomes took over. When Lamar Jackson was drafted... Didn't the Ravens have a quarterback? (laughs) His name was Joe Flacco. When the Packers traded up, need I say more, they had Aaron Rodgers. The other pattern is that when these teams traded up to get the guy that they thought was their future, they did it while having a guy on their roster that for various reasons they viewed as not the long-term answer. Alex Smith, eh, getting older, not that good. Mm -hmm. Terod Taylor, eh, he's not a franchise guy. Joe Flacco, eh, he's getting older. Aaron Rodgers, eh, he's getting older. Well, when we play this game, guess what I say? Daniel Jones, eh, he's never healthy. Yeah. It actually fits like a glove everything we're going to watch this weekend. No, you're absolutely right. And the other thing that, that, I mean, you could convince me that this is the right move to make for the Giants. And again, we're so far away from this. Like, why are we even talking about it other than the fact that our teams aren't in the postseason? But I think we're I mean, talking about it because it's interesting when teams are good to see what's the formula. This is a copycat league, and as fans, right. we're copycat fans sometimes to see, hey, what are they doing that works? 
And one thing that jumped out at me, I don't know if it jumped out at anybody else, was looking at the quarterbacks remaining and seeing how did we get here. And the two things that jumped are, A, seven of the eight quarterbacks were first-round picks, and five of the seven quarterbacks were trade-ups, which fit directly with a big decision Joe Shane has to make. Yeah, no, you're right. And, that, and so it, it's worth exploring this. And when you look at the options that the Giants have, we've talked about it many times, they just run the course with what they have, Daniel Jones and Tommy DeVito. Maybe they get some veteran free agent. You take a guy later in the draft who is somewhat of a project, that would probably be the J.J. McCarthy's or the Bo Nix's of the world. Uh, or you trade up and you try to get one of the top three guys, right? Because the Jaden Daniels and the C.J. Stroud and, um, uh, and Drake May down in North Carolina. So the, the options are there. But the question is, is this something that the Giants should do? Yes. And Oh, you weren't asking me. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the more I look at it, the more I say I agree with you. Oh, Evan. look at that. Right? And it's oh, not and it's not a hey. knock. This isn't the knock on Daniel Jones that a lot of people will take it to be, right? You just get replaced and yeah, you injured, you you didn't play, you know, well enough when you were healthy last year, you get replaced. But you know what? That's the nature of the league. Yeah. Right? So why should we feel any different towards a quarterback who might be a ownership favorite, or, you know, you know what I mean? Because we talked about that yesterday with John Mara, versus a lineman who's bad or a wide receiver who's bad. If he can't fully be trusted on for whatever reason, you ha- you, and you have a chance to replace him, you have to go at least try to replace him. So I agree with you in this regard. But the other thing I will I will point out, right? When you look at the 2018 draft, because that's the one that. That's where everybody is from this draft. Mm. Baker Mayfield was number one overall pick. Obviously, four teams later, <laughs> right, he, right, he right. is in the divisional round. Yeah, Josh Allen, you already mentioned it. You know, mm-hmm. the, the Tyra Taylor, and it took some time, but eventually he became an MVP candidate, and he will be so for the next couple of years. Lamar Jackson, that 2018 draft was interesting because it tells you something. That was five years ago, dude. Yeah, It takes some time for these quarterbacks to get to this level. We love Lamar. He's already got an MVP, but he's terrible in the postseason, right? So maybe he changes the narrative this year. Josh Allen, I mean, he hasn't gone to a championship game yet. So, it, no, he did go he's to, been a, to a championship game. He's not the Super Bowl yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Baker Mayfield, I mean, he can't stick. And so, but it feels like this might be his year. So there's there's some time and development that it takes. Daniel Jones is one year behind those guys. So if he's healthy, it might also be his coming to roost year. And that's what you have to be wary of when you make this decision. It's why it's such a hard one for Joe Shane and this Giants team this year. Because it could be, it could just work out for Daniel Jones next year. Or he could get hurt again and you're stuck standing there carrying the bag with nothing in it. And that's an important thing to note, Tiki. And this is why when I hear the argument, and it's all good, the idea that this is a major risk if you take the wrong guy, do you you know sets the franchise back? That's not that doesn't just go for quarterbacks. They've whiffed in the top ten on Evan Neal, on Eric Flowers. Yeah. They whiffed on Eli Apple corner. All of those picks set the Giants back in some way, shape, or form. But what will really set the Giants back is if this is a draft where they've identified a couple quarterbacks and they look back and they say, you know what, we should roll this out with with uh, Daniel Jones one more year. What if the next two years don't produce any quarterbacks they like? What if Daniel Jones is hurt by week three well, again this year? That sets your franchise back. No doubt. Look, getting the right guy, and here's the thing I've learned from this. Getting the right guy is worth it at all costs. Mm-hmm. Because The Rock has this great line. He uses it as trash talk. He'll say, Tiki, who do you think's going to win on Sunday? It doesn't matter what you think. It's a great line, and here's where it works. <laughs> if I asked you what did the Bills give up for Josh Allen, And what did those players turn into? You could politely say, it doesn't matter. Mm. What did the Chiefs give up to get Patrick Mahomes? It doesn't matter. What did the Ravens give up to get Lamar Jackson? It doesn't matter. And I'll send this one real close to home. What did the Giants give up to draft Eli Manning? It doesn't matter. Because that's the other side of this. The New York Giants, to trade up, have to go to number one overall if we're being logical about the way this draft is falling. And it's going to be expensive. And even though there's some guy on a message board who says it's already done and the Giants have already agreed to a deal with the Chicago Bears to get the number one overall Mm -hmm. pick, if it's not done, we all know it's going to be costly. 
Just like it was costly for the Rams to trade up and get Jared Goff. It doesn't matter they got to a Super Bowl and then flipped them for Matthew Stafford, who helped them win a Super Bowl. Right. It was costly for the Packers to get the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers and get Jordan Love. And it doesn't matter because they got their quarterback. It doesn't matter what you give up. Obviously, you want to negotiate it. You don't want to just give them everything. But if it works, if you nail your guy like the Bills did, you'll see it this weekend. Like the Chiefs did. We've seen it for the last half a decade. What it costs doesn't yeah. matter. So there's a couple of there's a couple of cautions to throw out here. So you talk about what the Rams did and what the Kansas City Chiefs did trading up, because those are the two big ones, right? Um, Buffalo as well, but they struggled for a couple of years. But when you talk about the Chiefs, mm-hmm. when they identified Pat Mahomes as the replacement for Alex Smith, and they traded up to get him, because they didn't need their draft picks. I put that in quotes, need, because you always need you know better talent. But they didn't need them. They were a double-digit win team true. every year that with Alex true. Smith. So that is true. My first-round pick that we're giving away, eh, yeah, whatever. If, we, if we're drafting 15 and we're drafting 32, whatever. It, di- it didn't matter for them. And for the Rams, this is the other side. This is the other kind of conversation. The Rams, when what they did was all organizational philosophy. Think about the sacrifices that they made over the years in draft picks. The draft picks didn't mean jack. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't matter. They didn't care, right? They would trade and give up draft picks. They trade for Jalen Ramsey. They traded for uh, who? Who else? I mean, there's a bunch of guys. I can't remember. Von Miller, Odell. They traded for all these guys, and they gave up seconds and thirds and first, and they didn't care. Right? They were we're draft picks mean nothing to us. We are loading as much talent as we possibly can because we need to win a Super Bowl. And they won a Super Bowl. Because if they didn't in LA, yeah. trust me, no one would care about the LA Rams in LA. Just like nobody cares about the LA Chargers in LA. Trust me. I went to like, did a couple of their games. They have zero fan base. Zero. They have to go on silent count at home, which is crazy. Hear me. Silent count at home. Nobody cares. The Rams had to do it. Their organizational philosophy dictated that they had to do it, and they executed it perfectly because they won a championship. So I can't use them as the example. I can't really use Kansas City as the example because they had the, it was an embarrassment of riches. They were a good team. They were just a good team. Yeah, I got you. And so the teams that I think about that desperately traded up to get their quarterback, it didn't work. Right? He just did, except for, except for Lamar. Well, why didn't it work? Well, because it didn't it, work because they identified the wrong guy. No, it didn't work because their teams weren't good. Right, but if you identify right. the right guy and you've got the right coaching, and yes, the Giants have a lot of holes, and a lot of teams have a lot of holes when they're drafting a franchise quarterback, but getting that guy can change everything. Right. Look, the Houston Texans had a lot of holes. They didn't have to trade up. They were selecting number two. And they selected a guy that really helped change their fortunes. We'll see him play over the weekend as well. Getting that guy can change everything. Everything. Yeah. No. And that's why I know it's going to be scary when you hear, well, what's the cost, Evan, of going to number one overall? <laughs> and you realize it's next year's number one. It may yeah. be Kayvon Thibodeau. It may be a second round pick. I get it. It's costly. But if you nail the right guy, it's worth it. Think yeah. about the quarterbacks playing this weekend. If I told you tomorrow Josh Allen's your quarterback, which we tried to tell you three months ago, and then the Bills turned their season around and blew that whole thing up. <laughs> Out of it, nice. <laughs> you would have said, sounds good. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm game. Sign me up. That's what it takes. It takes guts. And I hand it to these teams that we're going to watch this weekend. A lot of them in different moments – showed the guts, and they also did it while having a quarterback on their roster that you could have gone back and forth on in sports talk radio in that market saying, well, he should still be the guy. Well, they've won some games. Well, he's pretty good. No, no, no. You want to do better than pretty good. So as we get set for Divisional Weekend, and we'll talk a lot about these games as the show rolls on, we'll make our predictions, we'll go through all the different aspects of it, that's one thing that as Giant fans and Jet fans, if you're dreaming about replacing Aaron Rodgers down the road, We can argue about that. I disagree. I wouldn't do it if I'm the Jets. But think, trading up for the quarterback works. What you give up doesn't matter. It doesn't. You're right. When you nail it. Yeah, but when you miss it like Mitch Trubisky did, when you miss it like (laughs) they did to Trey Lance, when you miss it like they did with Bryce Young, 
When you miss it, it hurts. It's unless you're the San Francisco 49ers and just figure it out anyways with Mr. Irrele- Mr. Irrele- Irrelevant. Right, right, right. right. So, so it, I mean, <laughs> think about it. I mean, they got lucky because they missed. That's, you know, it's so funny. <laughs> so you think about all the teams that first-round pick quarterbacks playing this weekend. Right. Except for the team that traded up in the first round to try right. to get their guy. And missed. Missed. <laughs> and Mr. Irrelevant's the guy who is starting. It's crazy. It all comes full circle. <laughs> Your call's next, 877-337-6666. A lot of football to do. We'll mix in some baseball and basketball. 